Before any character design, make a reference board or a mood board. This can really help to give you a better understanding of the character you're trying to design. Blocking out is like sketching the character, and if the sketch is bad, the final drawing will also be bad. So ensure your block out forms are perfect from the beginning. If you're trying to improve your sense of proportion, try sculpting without a background image. Make sure to zoom out once in a while when sculpting to see that the different parts of your sculpts are working together. Or you can split up the viewports to check the proportions of your character in different angles. You can extract different parts of your sculpt by using the lasso max brush to select any portion of your sculpt, then going over to the max option, extract max, then click OK. Set up your blender workspace however you would like it to always start up, and you can now save that as a default workspace by going over to file, default, save startup file. Use the full stop or the period key on the numpad to center the rotation of your scene around any object. If you get any scale error props like this, be sure to apply your object scale. Do that by pressing Ctrl A and clicking on Apply Scale. Add the sculpting brushes you use the most to your quick favorites to easily select them. Use Ctrl G to join the different objects of your sculpt together. If you're sculpting with a mouse, don't. Use a higher focal length to get a less distorted view of your sculpt. Use the stabilize stroke option to get more smoother shapes in your sculpt. You can use the slide relax brush to smooth out the topology of your characters. Remove unwanted data from your Blender file. Go to File, Clean Up, and select the recursive unused data blocks. Add a shortcut to any frequently used operation. Add faces to the different parts of your retopologized model to easily adjust the parts of your sculpt. Turn on the face snapping option when you're modeling anything that will be placed on the body of your character. If you forget to turn on symmetry while sculpting, use this symmetrize function to symmetrize your mesh. Always add highlights on the eyes of your characters while in push production or directly in Blender. Avoid the use of oversaturated colors in your render. Use the dry lighting add-on as a setup for your lighting, then modify it from there to form different types of lighting setups. If you don't have any form of caustics or glass in your scene, turn off these caustic settings, they just make render times longer. Use a rim light to separate your characters from the background. To check the silhouette of your characters, Change your viewport lighting to matte cap, the viewport color to single, and set the color all the way to black. Change your number of undo steps by going over to Edit, Preferences, System, and now you can set the undo steps to however much you feel you need. If you're modeling complex scenes, setting up the camera angle first will really help you avoid a lot of unnecessary modeling. Speed up your render times by purchasing an NVIDIA GeForce 1490 graphics card. Or you can just watch these videos to know how you can speed up your render times on any PC. Get free HDR eyes for lighting from polyhaven.com. You don't have to start rigging from scratch. You can always use the rigifier rig to save yourself some time and you can always modify it afterwards. Turn on volume snapping if you're trying to place bones in the correct spot. Align the normal of your bones along the finger of your character for better deformations. Always curve the bones of your character's finger in the direction it's going to bend for better deformation. Once you apply the rig to your character, always make sure to. You can use the vertex group selection to remove or add vertices to any bone groups. For more appealing poses, break your character rig to the extreme. You can always adjust them afterwards with the shape key. Add the Voronoi texture at a very high scale for easy skin details on your character. Use Ctrl Shift T to add in a set of image textures into your node setup. Use alpha brushes to get more variation while texture painting. You can create a jitter brush in the texture paint mode by increasing the spacing and jitter to their max sizes and you can use this to paint little imperfections on your characters. Use different blending modes while texture painting for different texture effects. Turn on the new Drangler add-on as it saves a lot of time while using the shader editor. Use the shortcut Alt S to save any image textures in your blend file. While texture painting, always remember that there are subtle yellow, red, and blue tints across the face of any character. If you're still using the old hair particle system like me, the kink and roughness settings are your best friends for making good looking hair. Add volumetric in the background of the renders if you have no idea of what to put in your background. Add the ambient occlusion node to get free shades and highlights in the crevices of your characters. Always add compositing in your final render, either in Blender or any photo manipulation software of your choice.